in case you somehow missed it, the internet has been absolutely blown up this week when billionaire Balaji Srinivasan came out and betted millions of dollars on the fact that the US dollar is going to hyperinflate and Bitcoin is going to be worth more than a million dollars in June 2023. That's right. This billionaire actually thinks Bitcoin is going to 40x in price. And naturally, everybody has been talking about it. A number of his tweets have gone absolutely viral. But what I haven't seen is somebody breaking down the maths behind Balaji's prediction. And today I'm going to do just that. I'm going to show you the maths behind it. And I'm going to show you why we don't need hyperinflation to reach a $1 million Bitcoin, especially when we're seeing an enormous bank run in the Bitcoin space and in the traditional legacy financial space. Let's get into this one. Most people will say, okay, to reach a $1 million Bitcoin, we need to see $40 trillion of inflows coming into Bitcoin to push that market cap up and get a $1 million Bitcoin price. And I think that's wrong. The reason that most people are completely misunderstanding how we would get to a $1 million Bitcoin price is because the calculations that they're using are just incorrect, okay? They assume that there's 21 million Bitcoins for sale, and that is not the case. So taking a look at the first chart I want to show you guys today, of course, we've got the HODL waves chart. I know there's a lot going on on this chart. There's a lot of colors, there's a lot of lines, but all you need to notice is that little arrow right there. That's showing that 78% of the Bitcoin supply has not moved in over a year. It's been hodled, pardon the pun. And this is also backed up by another chart called the e-liquid supply chart. So this chart here kind of shows in blue the amount of Bitcoin that is currently classified as being e-liquid. And again, all that means is the coins are being hodled. They're not being moved. I know some of these charts have some funny names and all sorts of colors and lines going on, but all they are showing is Bitcoin is getting even more scarce, okay? And that is backed up by the final chart I want to show you guys. This is the 13-year chart of the amount of Bitcoin that's sitting on exchanges. So this tracks all exchanges, Coinbase, Kraken, Gemini, BlockFi, all of them, okay? And it shows that a very pivotal thing happened in March of 2020. You'll see there for the first time in Bitcoin's life, the amount of coins actually on exchanges began decreasing, okay? For the first eight years of Bitcoin's life, coins were sent to exchanges as people didn't understand what Bitcoin was. They didn't understand that you hodl Bitcoin for the long term, okay? People were mining Bitcoin and they were sending it to exchanges to be sold. People were buying Bitcoin in these early bull markets and they were sending them to exchanges to be sold at the end of these bull markets. But we can see here on the chart, 2020 happened and all of a sudden for the first time in Bitcoin's life, coins have been leaving exchanges for the past three years straight. And you can see 1 million Bitcoins have left exchanges in the past three years. In March of 2020, the total amount of Bitcoin on exchanges peaked out at 3.1 million coins. Today, we are only left with 2.1 million Bitcoins circulating on exchanges for sale. So all that means is the scarcest monetary good in human history is just getting even more scarce. And this consideration of it being even more scarce than a 21 million hard cap supply is what everybody is missing when they're doing these maths calculations and determining where the Bitcoin price could go in the future. So now that you understand not all the Bitcoin are actually available for sale, how does that impact the price of Bitcoin? And how does that impact this thing called the multiplier effect? Okay, so the multiplier effect is very interesting and it is the most commonly misunderstood thing there is in the entire Bitcoin space, okay? I think it's so underrated. I wrote a whole 7,000 word article talking about this multiplier effect that I'll link in the bottom of the description of this video, but I'm going to give you the TLDR YouTube friendly version of it. Okay. As I've illustrated, only three to 4 million of the Bitcoins actually circulate on a daily basis and are available for sales. That means that when you run the numbers on Bitcoin and try to calculate its theoretical market cap, you have to account for the fact that not all 21 million Bitcoins are available for sale, okay? This chart from Willie Wu's website shows and articulates my point perfectly. He has a 12-year chart showing how many dollars it takes inflowing into Bitcoin to actually push its market cap higher. 
So we can see the amount of dollars it takes to push the Bitcoin market cap up actually changes based on how many Bitcoins there actually are being circulated on exchanges at any given time. But if we look at a little bit of an average window, let's look at the past five years, for example, we can see that over the past five years of data, on average, for every $1 that flows into the Bitcoin network, it actually pushes the Bitcoin market cap up by somewhere between two and three X. So now that we've learned what the Bitcoin multiplier effect is, let's put it to use. And let's do a little bit of, as Greg Foss would say, grade 11 maths. I wanna walk you guys through a couple of scenarios that I have laid out to show you how we should be using this multiplier effect. So the first maths equation we're looking at, we're not going to use the multiplier effect. We're gonna do it how everybody does their Bitcoin maths, which I think with all due respect is wrong, okay? So everybody's saying, how is Balaji going to be right? How much money needs to come into Bitcoin to push it to a $1 million price tag per coin? Most people think it's only $21 trillion because they're doing the maths like this. They're saying, okay, to get a market cap of $21 trillion, we need to see $21 trillion of money to flow in. And if you have a market cap of $21 trillion, again, we divide it by the 21 million coins that are available for sale. And everybody says, yep, Beautiful. That's $1 million per Bitcoin. Okay. But that is wrong. They're not using the multiplier effect. So scenario number two, the next equation we're looking at is what I think is the correct formulation for your Bitcoin mathematics equations. We can see here, we have a multiplier effect of three. We're using three for, you know, simplified demonstrative purposes. If you want to be entirely accurate, you can use 2.6, okay? $21 trillion trying to come into Bitcoin. Well, guess what? We need to add that 3X multiplier. So that gives you $63 trillion in market cap value if 21 trillion tried to flow into Bitcoin. So how much is that per coin? Well, we go $63 trillion market cap divided by the 21 million Bitcoins. Again, we've used our multiplier. So we're going to use the 21 and that gives you a price tag of $3 million per Bitcoin. It's interesting to note that that is only double the market cap of gold, okay? And to actually get your $1 million per Bitcoin price tag using our 3X multiplier, we would actually only need $8 trillion of money trying to flow into Bitcoin to buy some of the limited coins that are actually available for sale to push Bitcoin to a price tag of $1 million. And that's based upon the hypothetical scenario that the multiplier effect remains at 2.6x. As we've shown over the past three years of data, we have been in this perpetual downtrend in available Bitcoin for sale. So I think that downtrend is going to actually continue into the future. So that means the fewer and the fewer amount of coins there actually is circulating on exchanges for sale, and the more Bitcoin is being hodled and hodled into the future, that means that that multiplier effect is going to increase significantly. It's not going to be 2.6x or 4x or 5x. We could get into, again, a hypothetical scenario into the not too distant future where the multiplier effect is actually something like 5, 10, or even 15x. Okay, so imagine that. For every $1 that tries to flow into Bitcoin, pushes up the market cap by 15x. Okay, it's outrageous. And when you do the maths looking at what could Bitcoin potentially be worth, you get some pretty mind-boggling questions. I'm not going to go into them in this video. I want to keep it short and brief, but you can read this article that I wrote in 2021. And a lot of people are giving me a lot of flack for predicting how easily we could get to a $65 million per Bitcoin price tag by 2030 without hyperinflation. If you want to check my maths, don't trust me. Go and verify it for yourself. It'll be linked down below. But that is why I don't think we need hyperinflation to get a $1 million Bitcoin, okay? I think the more important thing that Balaji is doing is he's encouraging the hodling of Bitcoin. He's telling people, get your Bitcoin off exchanges, hodl it, don't sell it. And I think that's actually potentially gonna have a bigger impact on where Bitcoin goes in the next 90 days, okay? For you to actually kind of create a stampede and create a mass hysteria event where the US dollar goes into hyperinflation, 
I think don't think that's likely, okay? I think it's far more likely that the US dollar is the last fiat currency to hyperinflate, but you could easily see a $1 million per Bitcoin price tag just by generating enough hype and movement around just how scarce Bitcoin is, okay? The scarcer Bitcoin becomes, the bigger that multiplier effect becomes. And what happens when other nation states around the world begin to come to the realization that there are no Bitcoins left on exchanges, okay? Today, you could buy all of the Bitcoin that's currently circulating on exchanges, the 2.1 million coins, for somewhere around $56 billion in cash, okay? Big number, again, but let's put that into perspective. Apple has over $200 billion of cash sitting on its balance sheet, and it's becoming what Michael Saylor would say is a melting ice cube, okay? If inflation's around 10% per year, and you have $200 billion of cash on your balance sheet, you're losing $20 billion a day, okay? So imagine Apple saying, okay, I want to at least just take a 10% stake in the Bitcoin network. I want to diversify my $200 billion balance sheet, put 10% of that into Bitcoin. All of a sudden, Apple would want to buy $20 billion of Bitcoin. And guess what? They would drain nearly half the amount of Bitcoins available for sale on exchanges, okay? This gets into some pretty interesting numbers and game theory, because think about it. Michael Saylor has around 150,000 coins to his name himself. And imagine if the other 5,000 billionaires come to the realization that Michael Saylor has had, and that Bitcoin is an asset that you buy for 100 years and you never sell. Well, there's only enough Bitcoin on exchanges for another 12 of those 5,000 billionaires to accumulate the same amount of Bitcoin that Michael Saylor holds, 150,000 coins. So just think about what happens when the price of Bitcoin starts to run up and Michael Saylor's net worth begins to climb because 100% of his net worth is denominated in Bitcoin. All of a sudden, he starts to climb that world's richest man leaderboard and think about the game theory that kicks in if you're Elon Musk or Bill Gates and you see Michael Saylor rising up that world's richest man leaderboard. The only way you can stop him or the only way you can stay richer than Michael Saylor is to accumulate more Bitcoin than Michael Saylor. We can probably discuss the game theory of Bitcoin monetization in another video in the not too distant future. If you enjoyed this one, feel free to slap a like on it and subscribe to the channel. With all that said, I'll see you guys in the next video.